Hello and welcome to this lockdown learning video where we're going to take a further look at Media Bay. So in the last video we saw how you can browse uh, VST Sound, basically the included factory content. There's also factory content here which has got some of the presets but it's a different way of looking at it. So rather than looking at it via the sort of file structure way here, you can look at it in terms of VST presets and track presets. So if you think, right, I'm looking for a track preset, then you can then look at it under there, etc. So that's useful. Now, user content, this is a bit misleading. I, I don't end up here often, mostly because I don't think I save many things under things like VST presets and so on. But where I do find it useful is using this computer to index my own sample. So in this case, what I'm going to do is just show you briefly how you can get this to index your samples. So this is something we've looked at briefly previously. So in this case, we go into this computer and then because I'm on a Mac, I'll go to Mac OS, but you'd probably be your C drive if you're on Windows. And then my users folder and then MTT because that's who I'm logged on as in this case. Now, I have a samples folder where I've got the Loop Masters free samples that they give you when you sign up for. It's about a gigabyte of samples. It takes an age to download because their server is quite slow. But there's some worthwhile samples in there, so that's a tip for you if you want to. So in there, I've got all these samples. I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger, and you can see we've got all these here. And we can get it to index these just by ticking this box. So by ticking the samples box, we see it now goes through. Red means it's not done yet. White means it is. So it's sampled all of those, been through, check them all out. And now if we just want to browse those samples, they will be in here. Now notice that there's no metadata for them because Cubase doesn't read that information from the samples. Sometimes there will be things like key and the number of bars and beats and tempo, etc. although not always. So let's just scroll down and see if any of these have been taken with tempo and yeah some of them have so if we sort it by tempo we can see that of those uh, about 15 or so have had their tempo correctly identified and the rest haven't done so it's not the best at doing this kind of thing but once you've got those you can treat those exactly the same way as all of the content that comes with Cubase so here's that so it says that's 125 beats per minute and it's playing it at 90 because we've got this turned on. So if we turn Align Beats Project off and replay it, interesting. So any of those, those work in exactly the same way. So as you build up your uh, sample collection, you can use this to index them. You can add all that information in as well, although that is uh, somewhat a labor of love with many things, but just making sure it's indexed it. Now, what I find with this is often is if I've put in a new set of samples, I need to untick a box and then retick it to get it to re-index them. So if you untick it, it will go all removed from database and you can click remove and then they go and then you can just retick it and then it will resample them because I find sometimes the information's out of date or if I've added a new folder. So if I added a new folder underneath here, it may not realize it was there or it may not index it or it will say it's been indexed and those samples aren't appearing. So it's it's definitely not perfect, but having all your samples in here and say, and particularly having this turned on so that your beats align to projects so you get the idea of what the tempo is going to be when you put it in, or if you've got a project playing, you can have this turned on and then it will synchronize it as well as just put it in the right time. Makes life much, much easier. So depending on the samples that you've got, you may or may not get uh, worthwhile information with them. Obviously, stuff like this is fairly straightforward, so it always gets that right. The number of bars and beats, etc. not always. The key analysis, not always. Sometimes it gets it from here. So you can see there, for instance, those top two, it says are in A and G, and then you can filter via keys and so on. So it does work. The last thing I want to look at uh, in this video today is the media type. So you can filter up here. So if you go, let's go back to all media here. So we're looking at everything and you can see we've got over 10,000. So that's a bit bewildering. You can filter it. Let's say you're only interested in audio files. Once you click off that, you see it's only showing the audio files. We've still got over 10,000, but at least it's thinned them down a bit. And then we can start filtering via 
category here. Now, obviously, these categories won't apply to the samples you've imported yourself. So sometimes I will just go audio files and maybe limit it by this. Sometimes I will filter by this. Depends what I want to do. But I know that most of my third-party samples aren't indexed in terms of all of the metadata that's in here because I've just not got the time to go through and do all that. So you can filter them. So let's say we'll just go for drums and percussion. So yeah, just the 8,300 and then uh, beats, etc. And then you can start filtering down to whatever you want. Let's go for electronica dance and then oh, some big beat. And then, then you're down to a manageable number of samples to audition. Etc. that kind of thing. So you should be able to find things pretty quickly by partly by filtering by type. So if you know you're after audio and then partly by filtering there. They say once you're there, handling it is dead easy and it's it's really quick and easy to do. One thing that's a little strange with this, this doesn't quite work properly. So when you turn it back on, it still shows in orange that it's being highlighted and turning that off leaves it turned on which is a bit strange. So your know, handling of this is a bit weird. It doesn't quite work, uh, certainly in the way I'd expect. I'm sure there's a, a reason for that, but it's a little bit confusing. So that's it for the quick tour of Media Bay over the past couple of videos. So spend a bit of time practicing with this because it, it is useful. And for any samples that I've got now, I generally will do it via Media Bay purely because it means I can hear them in context and you don't import six drum loops that don't fit with the groove of your song you've already got. You can just straight away judge them and find out whether they fit. So I hope you found that useful and we'll see you again soon.